Consider this example. Two employees are nearly identical in every way in terms of qualifications. However, one of them is female. The female employee earns roughly 61 cents to the dollar her male colleague makes. This wage gap differs amongst different ethnicities. For European American individuals, the wage gap is nearly two times larger than the wage gap between African Americans. The highest paid individuals of Asian American males earn almost twice as much as Latina women, who are the lowest paid group. The wage gap also increases with age because of the accumulation of wage discrepancies. One factor that may affect the wage gap is the motherhood penalty, which is the reduction in women's lifetime earnings that result from having children. Jobs are often segregated by gender. For example, male-dominated positions include airline pilots, mechanics, carpenters, and welders. While female-dominated positions are childcare workers, dental hygienists, and registered nurses. There are, however, some jobs that maintain a 50-50 gender ratio, such as bus drivers, reporters, or college professors. Comparable worth is the principle that people should be paid equally for work that is comparable in responsibility, educational requirements, and so forth. It's been proposed that perhaps women are paid less because they don't negotiate for higher pay as well as men do. This may seem like blaming women, however, the context greatly affects the outcome. If women were given prior knowledge of aspects that were negotiable, they were more likely to speak up. When wages are explicitly said to be negotiable, less women applied than men. This is because negotiating your wages indicates a confidence in the job and other factors consistent with the male role. Females are usually more modest. Women tend to be afraid of social backlash or negative evaluations of them for violating the gender norm. A feminist perspective involves finding a path forward to make things equitable and just. Entitlement is an individual's sense of what they should receive, like pay, based on who they are or what they've done. Women and men tend to have different standards for comparison. Women compare with other women and see that their pay is equitable. While when they compare it to their male colleagues, they see a drastic difference. This leads to women tolerating the wage injustice because at least their fellow women are getting paid equally. In self-reports made, men felt they deserved more pay than women and granted themselves higher bonuses. Jobs used to be advertised based on gender. That has since been outlawed. But today, modern sexism is used in the wording of the ads, such as catering the ad towards men by using masculine phrasing. A classic experiment showed that even though the woman's work was identical to the man's, her work was judged to be inferior to his. An average effect size of 0.08 was found comparing the value of men's work to women. This value indicates men were given slightly higher ratings. Gender bias depended on how much information the rater had about the applicant besides their gender. The climate of the workplace determines the amount of discrimination present. Marginalized groups need to feel welcomed in their work environments. Implicit stereotypes and microaggressions are still indicated in modern work environments, such as people of the LGBTQ community feeling uncomfortable if their gender or sexual identity is known in their workplace. The glass ceiling is an invisible barrier to the promotion of women and ethnic minorities into upper management levels. A quote I found while reading this chapter states, Breaking the glass ceiling isn't just good for women, it's good for business. Women might be perceived as ineffective leaders for a variety of reasons. A possibility includes lacking abilities, personality traits, and interpersonal skills. Women's skills are usually measured subjectively instead of objectively, therefore creating an inherent bias. Role congruity theory is the theory that holds that people tend to perceive incongruity between leadership behaviors and the female role, and therefore are prejudiced against female leaders. Are we making any progress? Yes and no. Barriers against women are more permeable today than ever before, but they are still present. Women carry a lot of work on their shoulders once a family becomes part of the picture, such as a full-time job, the household, marriage, children, or an elderly relative. The scarcity hypothesis states that adding a role creates stress, which has negative consequences for mental and physical health. The expansionist hypothesis states that multiple roles are good for mental health because they provide more opportunities for stimulation, self-esteem, and so on. So why can't we have both? Employment actually improves mental health. Of course, if a woman's life is not ideal, adding more roles will cause more stress. If a mother feels they have inadequate childcare, combining work with motherhood becomes stressful. Billover suggests that if one is harboring negative feelings about one role, it may carry on to another. Compensation is the process where positive feelings and rewards from one role make up for the stresses in another. Time-dedicated diaries were made to show the shift in roles after a child is introduced into the family. As you can see, once a child comes into the picture, 
women take up more housework, more childcare, and the same amount of work. That isn't to say the father figure does not help. This is just on average for dual earner heterosexual couples. In conclusion, the gender gap persists across ethnicities. Discrimination and climate are important to equity in the workplace. Gender roles must continue to change so that men contribute equally and feel equally as responsible for housework and childcare. Perhaps the U.S. government should provide affordable childcare to alleviate some stress.